Hi, this is Cassie with Complete Speech. Today I would like to give you a brief demo of the Smart Palette software. Let's start with the installation. The Smart Palette 2.0 software is compatible with Windows 7 and Windows 8. You will need a minimum of 4 GB RAM and adequate processing speed to run the software. When you first put in the CD, the autoplay should appear to launch your installation wizard. If not, you'll need to navigate to your CD or DVD drive files and double click the Smart Palette Setup to launch your installation wizard. Agree to the terms and conditions and click install. During the installation process, make sure you do not have your data link connected via USB port to your computer. When it asks, give permission for the driver to install. Then wait a few more moments for the installation to complete. Once the installation is complete, you will see this icon appear on your desktop. Double click to launch the SmartPot software. Here you will be given the option to create a new speaker. In the future, you would also be able to select any speakers you have previously saved in a list that would appear here. The speaker file allows you to save the display preferences and configuration for each person who uses the software. It will also allow you to save recordings and custom targets for each person. We'll take a look at each of those features later on. Here in the speaker tab, you can make changes to the speaker display. To create a new speaker once you're in the software, you'll hit this plus sign, give your speaker a new name, and hit OK. You can also edit the speaker name, and delete a speaker here. To switch to a new speaker, click this drop down and select the speaker you would like to work with. You can customize the palette display by selecting the anatomical view, standard palette, or no palette display at all. I'll keep the display on anatomical. Here you can decide if you would like the black sensor dots to display when you're in the practice tab. If I uncheck this box, instead of seeing the black sensor dots like you do now in this view, it would look like this. For the purposes of this demo, I will keep the sensor dots displayed. I can now configure the display to match my custom Smart Palette mouthpiece. When you click Edit Sensors, you will see the display change. This means I can now click on any of the sensor dots to turn it on or off. When a sensor is turned off, you will see it change to gray. Click again to turn it black or back on. Doing this is necessary because fitting the sensor array to each personalized palette can require us to trim off rows or columns of sensors. You'll want the display to match what will actually light up on the screen due to your mouthpiece. Look for a guide sent with your smart palette to tell you which sensors have been removed. You can preview any sensors changes that you've made, and if you wish, you can change the palette display from large to small. But more often than not, the default large palette will be the best fit. Next, let's look at the Practice tab. This is the view that allows you to actually see your tongue to palette contact and is where you will spend the majority of your time in the software. Right now, I do not have my data link or smart palette connected. But when I plug in the data link, you will see the red no device disappear and orange audio waves appear along the bottom of the screen. When I put in my smart palette, you will see my tongue to palette contact display as I talk. Let's start by looking at the most basic feature, the tongue targets. I'll start by quickly pulling over a default target. We'll go into more detail about this later on. 
For now, I'll select the general R target to use in the Practice tab. You can see now that in the Practice tab, I've clicked the target button I just added. Blue circles appear on the palette, and when I hit the area indicated by the target circles with my tongue, they light up blue. Anywhere that my tongue hits outside of the target area lights up orange. If I clear this target, I can also create a custom tongue target that captures my personal best production of the R sound. As I hold the R sound, I will hit Capture. This captures any sensor that my tongue was touching at the exact moment I hit the button. I'll name my new target, hit Save and Edit, and make any changes I see necessary. Because I got a fairly good production of the R sound, meaning my sound of the R was pretty good, I'll only make one or two small adjustments to even things up, save my changes, and go back to the practice tab. Now I'm able to use my custom R. I'll clear that off and we'll take a look at the recording feature. With the recording feature, I can create recordings that not only capture my audio, but my tongue to palate contact. This is helpful to save information about how a client has improved over time or to immediately play back a student's production to show them additional feedback right then. I'll show you how it works. I start by pressing record and saying a short phrase. Run rabbit run. I press stop and you can see that my recording is now captured and loaded. I can play it back Run, rabbit, run. Stop or pause. Scroll through the recording. Or click through frame by frame. If you find it helpful, you may loop the playback, or even play it back at three quarters, half, or one quarter speed. If I wanted to zoom in to a particular part of the recording, I would use my mouse to highlight it and press the zoom in button. You can then zoom back out to view the entire recording once again. To save this recording for future reference, click this save icon. Give the recording a name and click OK. This will only save the recording to this speaker's file. If I would like to transfer the recording to another speaker, whether on this computer or an entirely different computer, I can export it. If I click this icon, I can now save the recording to my computer's file system, for instance, to the desktop. This saves the recording in the WAV format, which allows you to listen to the audio in any compatible player. To actually see the tongue to palate contact along with hearing the audio, you will need to load the recording file back into the Smart Palette software. I can also export palette data to a CSV file by clicking this icon and saving the file. This allows me to open up palette data into any program that will handle this sort of data. I'll use Excel to show you the data right now. You'll see each sensor is numbered from 1 to 124 and is marked as either on or off by ones and zeros over time. Back in the Smart Palette software, I can use the Audio Options dialog to change the audio or palette refresh rate in Hertz. In most cases, the default setting of 100 will be best. This would only be changed for troubleshooting if your computer is running slowly, for instance, to 50. Once I am done with the recording, I click this X to clear out a bit. Later, I can go and load that recording 
or import it from my computer's files. In the practice tab, you will also find two activities, oral coordination and gold standard. Oral coordination can be used as a way to acclimate a user to what they are seeing on the screen, as a fun warm-up or game, or in some cases, even for oral motor exercises. It works by displaying just one target circle on the palette. The goal is to touch that target with just your tongue tip. To start, I'll select how many sensors I would like to display during the activity and press play. Once you're finished, you'll notice that the timer has changed from orange back to white and displays how many seconds the activity took to complete. Gold Standard is another activity that can be used as a fun game or motivating competition. It can also be used as a way to get quantifiable data on how well a client is hitting their current goal. To use it, select a target to display. The goal is to hit and hold the sound for the duration of the activity. Select how long you want the activity to last. I'll choose continuous. Press play and notice the score gets higher as you get closer to filling up your target goal. When I press stop, my average score from throughout the activity displays. You'll want to note that this activity does score higher for overshooting than undershooting. So watch that your clients are not overshooting their target sound. Finally, you'll want to note that while the default is for just one speaker to display, you'll sometimes want to utilize the two speaker display. This can be done by clicking the icon in the upper right hand corner and selecting the second speaker you would like to use. This allows you to model the correct tongue placement on one side, while a second speaker is matching it on the other. You can also switch speaker sides and click the X to close one speaker, going back to a one speaker display. Now let's take a look at the tongue targets tab. Along the left hand of the display, you will see a list of any targets that have been saved to that speaker. There are seven default targets included in the software. These are general versions of the sounds, and ideally you would simply use these targets as a basis for creating custom targets for each new person. You will notice when I click on a target's name, it's highlighted in dark gray, and the target circles now display on the screen. If I want to use this target in the practice tab, I'll make sure that its box is checked here. Selecting which targets do and do not display in the practice tab allows you to only see the most relevant targets during therapy. It also allows you to save as many targets as you would like here in the tongue targets tab. You may wish to use this feature to capture and save targets to show a client's progress over time or just to keep track of which sounds you're not currently working with, but would like to hang on to. I can create a new target from scratch here. If I happen to know which sensors I want included in a certain sound, for instance, the L target, I simply click which sensors I would like to be included in that target and press save at the top of the screen. If I would prefer to make a copy of a default target, I can select which target I would like to use as a basis, press Save As, give my target a new name, make any adjustments I would like, and hit Save. I can also choose to rename my target export it for use with another speaker either on this computer or another computer 
import a target from another speaker that has previously been exported, or delete a target. This concludes this demo of the Smart Palette software. Thanks for watching! If you have any additional questions, please call us at 877-710-6031 or email at contactus at completespeech.com.